Let's the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the pages this morning and see what's making the rounds on the page on the front pages of the national dailies. I mean, to be very precise, GD Johnson joins us uh, right here. GD, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Messi. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you on this Friday morning. And you, and you look great in your attire. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the Otumba of Plus TV Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quickly, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. It talks about the MBS reports in security energy crisis. Plunge 133 Nigerians into poverty. In security energy crisis, plunge 133 Nigerians into poverty. 60 or 86 million in North and 47 in South result would influence allocation of resources. Uh, that's what uh, Buhari is quoted to say. <laughs> Skill acquisition, not cash distribution, will end poverty. That's what experts are quoted to say. Very interesting. You also find another caption, stash cash, more governors under our radar. EFCC chair... A man is quoted to see, and uh, there's been a lot of whether or not, but we move on, we move away from that. Parties filed only 10.1 percent women candidates, according to reports, and yet we still have several promises about the national gender policy and, of course, inclusive, uh, uh, you know, project of women in governance. Bandits killed chief imam, two farmers in Sokoto, very saddening. Government's intolerant ordering disruption of campaigns, IGP. Or governor's intolerance, of course, uh, seem to be an abbreviated one ahead of the 2023 elections. Senate committee uncovers 10.8 billion naira in session in defense ministry budget. PTAD recovers 26.5 million pounds colonial pension fund from the United Kingdom. And there's also a pictorial representation, you know, of uh, the MBS report that talks about uh, Nigerians in poverty, 130, or they're saying 133 million. Uh, 63 percent there you have Nigerians are multi-dimensionally poor very 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 unfortunate 65 uh, percent that's that graph you find right there at the front page of the daily trust but let's uh, move our attention from the daily trust and quickly take a look at the punch newspaper hoodlums attacks federal government soldiers DSS in INEC office nationwide I'd like to take that again Hoodlums attack. Federal government deploys soldiers, DSS, in INEC offices nationwide. Security team to be drawn from Army, please. DSS, NSCDC fire service. First rider, you find another rider says, Governors using thugs. State security outfit to cause violence. IG cries out. U.S. threatens to sanction candidates and politicians. Sponsoring violence campaigns. <laughs> Quite interesting. And uh, these are the writers you find. Nigeria's poverty exceeds World Bank projection. Five states lead. And 133 million Nigerians ranked poor in federal government's latest poverty index. Economists slam government and demand effective policies. Nigeria, narrow depreciation, inflation, erode workers of uh, 25 trillion uh, salaries. And just before move away, obese supporters protest, allege underage registration and vote buying plot. Well, that has might also be confirmed by the former commissioner and uh, rec personnel right there, Iguini, Mike Iguini. One billion addition to defense budget uncovered, minister queried. And you find looted funds, EFCC puts more governors on the watch. How delays 
costly court processes for straight families' access to deceased savings. Uh, more like an editorial, but that's the much we can take on the punch. We quickly turn our attention uh, to this day newspaper. Bauer says, Naira redesigns significant step to economic recovery. Abdurashid Bauer says, more governors being monitored for stashed cash. ICPC recovers 117 billion Naira in eight months. Arraigns former customary court of appeal judge. CBN directs banks to work on Saturdays to beat deadline for return of old bank notes. <laughs> These are the writers you find right here underneath the caption of the state newspaper. Moving away from that, another caption says, Southeast businessmen support Tunibu's presidential bid with one billion naira. More troubles for PNID as firm owned by Danjima Drags ex partner to court over $40 million uh, loss. Well, that's it on uh, the Disney newspaper. And then we just look at the nation before we have uh, G.D. Johnson share his thoughts. Security chiefs, WK attacks Atiku for criticizing Buhari. Rivers governor vows to remain in PDP, fight vultures and scavengers. Obi outlines plan. Another header says, IG blames violence, tension and governors. Tunibu to make Southeast industrial hub. First lady, governors, wives rally for Tunibu Shatima in Ilori, that quarrel state. And Nigeria faces debt servicing challenges, DMO warns. Well, that's it this morning on uh, the Nation newspaper. Let's quickly have GD Johnson uh, share his thoughts now. GD, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, Messi. Once again, it's nice sharing the platform with you this morning, as well as with our viewers over the world. All right. The Daily Trust says that the insecurity energy crisis uh, plunged 133 million Nigerians into poverty. Uh, that's the latest report from the MBS. Quickly, we'd like to share your thoughts on that. Well, it's, that's just the scorecard. No matter whatever spin the present administration wants to put on what it has done, whether it's infrastructure or whether they are winning the war on the security and the rest of it, it does not translate to human capital development of Nigerian writers for that push Nigerians into poverty because it's very clear if you have a situation whereby 103 million people are into poverty as a result of failure of government to do the needful to address two critical sectors. One, the energy sector, which is the mainstay of the Nigerian economy, and two, the security sector, which is what gives confidence, hope to the people, as well as to both local and foreign investors. So that's just the scorecard of this present administration. There's no spin that can be put to it. They themselves have acknowledged um, their, their failure with respect to that, because whatever policies they've done, it has not translated into moving the people out of poverty. Rather, it has succeeded in pushing them back into poverty. If you see a story that is related to it, when this government was embarking on this jamboree of sharing money, of doing traders' money, of being all of this cash donations, and the vice president was busy junketing that he almost lost his life in the process, going to different markets and to different states, giving out money, or what the Minister of Humanitarian Services engaged in during the COVID, whereby she herself was practically and personally involved in the sharing of um, financial resources as part and parcel of COVID relief. When we have seen what it has done in terms of contributing to the inflation that we have, I've also seen, according to SPAT, that the skill acquisition is the only thing that can solve the poverty problem, not cash distribution. And when the, these are just basic ABC of economics, they are just 
the simple aspect of economics that we all learned while we are in secondary school. So it's, it's just clear that, um, and I think this is a area in which the media should set agenda. If the scorecard of the present administration is showing that one times two million are pushing to beyond the rhetoric, beyond populism, because Buhari was elected on populism, other presidents were elected on rhetorics. Jonathan, I have no shoes. We put into the story. Buhari on populism, I'll fight poverty. Beyond all of this, because we have seen, it's the same style, they repackage themselves. Just like you package products, whether consumables or utility products, that's the way you package the candidates. So the same style they've used to package utility products and consumable products, is the same way they are packaging all these candidates. They are using those strategies to package them. Beyond that, we must ask them, what are you going to do? These are facts. There are 103 million people, Nigerians, in poverty. What are the things you are going to do to move Nigeria out of poverty? One. Two. One, two of the major causes of this particular issue is security. How are you going to address the issue of security? What steps are you, what's your blueprint? Three. What's your blueprint to solving the energy crisis? These are the questions we should be asking this presidential candidate. Like I've told people, it doesn't matter where the president comes from. I have gone beyond those ethnocentric sentiments wherever the president comes from. I, I, I don't care wherever the president comes from. As long as the president is doing the needful and is providing deliverables. Unfortunately, in fact, it is people who are the people of the president that suffered most under the presidency. Go and ask Asina people. Ask people in Ogun state. Ask people in Bayesa state. And let them tell you the experience of having the presidency coming to Bayesa or coming to Ogun State or coming to Kasina. Well, um, still on the Daily Trust newspaper, there's also a report uh, where the IG is concerned about uh, the actions of the governor saying that they are intolerant and, and responsible for the interruptions of campaigns in various states. The, the IG has police commissioner that reports to him directly. The police commissioners are practically the Chief Security Officer, in practical terms, but on paper it is the governor that is the Chief Security Officer. Now, what I is what I is is um, police commissioner doing for him? Then he has EIGs, then he has DIGs in various zones, then DIGs for different zones. So, what are they doing? What intelligence are they gathering? Now, if the governors are using their thug, because another people reported that the governors are using their thugs and they are using their state security actually to foment trouble. This, if the governor is not prosecutable, these individuals are prosecutable. These individuals can be arrested. So beyond, these people should just save us those rhetorics. That's just my own. Enforce your law. There are laws that deal with this issue. There's no doubt that the governors have demonstrated some level of intolerance. And I think that there's a need for us to insert some certain clauses in our constitution. How will the state governor deny the opposition party the opportunity of making use of state utility? It is not his father's property. It is not, it is not his father's property. It is not his personal property. It is not his personal company. He should have access to it. It's a public, it's a public property. And this thing needs to be inserted. If it's not inserted, we need good lawyers to challenge these actions and that the courts will rule that on no account, on no circumstance, will a governor, a sitting governor, deny the citizen of Nigeria the opportunity of making use of public utility. It is sacrilegious. And if they are doing this, there are, there are officials of the state that are civil servants that can be arrested and prosecuted. But so the IG should just save us of calling press conferences and telling us uh, this, the governors, uh, there are people that can be arrested and there are people that can be prosecuted. I mean, there are cases, the there are cases where case. the governors, uh, some governors have made an excuse or have said that uh, in order to use a public facility in a state, there are procedures, I mean, there are orders that need to be followed or requirements that should be met. 
And in, in, in that situation, what, how, what do we then say? We need, we need a protocol. We need a protocol to put in place during campaign season. There should be a protocol. A protocol should be put in place during campaign season. And I think that this is where other stakeholders need to come in. This is where INEC needs to come in. What the party should do is for them to come with their timetable. Probably submit this timetable to INEC, which happens to be a federal agency. INEC liaises with, liaises with the various other agencies of government. In Ogun State, APC will be doing their own rally on social so date. Uh, PDP, NNPP, and what else. So once you have that, no governor can use an excuse to, to do that. There is, there is no governor, there is no sitting governor of the major parties that is not culpable. There is no former governor that is not culpable of committing this heinous crime against the state and humanity. Well, um, GD, let's let's look at the nation on the nation newspaper. Rivers Governor vows to remain in the PDP and fights uh, thus to fight the vultures and scavengers. How do you describe this statement, especially when no. some persons are saying that you know uh, Governor Yesam Wike is acting contrary uh, to the party um, ethics? For instance, you want to describe his action over time as anti-party. You know what they have done to him? They've just left him alone to continue dancing his mac macabre dance in the in the there's a particular saying uh, um he that does not know how to treat retreat that, that does not know when to retreat and when to advance will be consumed by war. Um um so that's just the reality. Is is the reason why we can still relevant is because he's governor. There have been many governors of River State. That are larger than life, and whoever is close to him needs to advise him. The moment he loses the office of the governor, it becomes irrelevant. That's the reality. There have been governors and governors in Nigeria, but generalismo as governors. So it is 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 using the platform of the state to do what he's doing. And there's a saying that there, there, there's there's a level to which um, you can you can you, you can whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see, he's dancing left, right, and center. And those he has insulted is defending today. Those he is defending today were those he insulted yesterday. And those he's insulting today were those he defended yesterday. So he's just, look, who, I don't know those that are advising him. I don't know those that are advising him. I don't know whether he needs to counsel. But the reality of the matter is that by May 29, 2023, it becomes irrelevant. Whatever the outcome of the presidential election, if he does not know how to play the games, you see there have been many there have been many governors even before him in River State, Peter Obili, Celestino Meyer, Ruti Miyamichi. So you let him continue for, because, as far as I am concerned, what what is the direction? If you don't want to be a part of a party, you leave the party and go to another party. And then, if you want to be part of the party, you become part of the party. If he, if he had succeeded in winning the presidential candidate, the presidential ticket of the party, what would he say? After all, I watched the drama which he did. I could recall that the ambassador invited them to 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 to, Abeputa, to talk about the PDP. When Peter Obi was still there, that they should support Peter Obi. We all knew the role he played. So let him continue dancing his macabre dance. It's just that people that are people that are hailing him, they are hailing him because he's the governor. That's the reality. They are not telling him the truth. Let him listen. And listen to the they are hailing him because he has the paraphernalia of the office of the governor. The moment that is not there, it becomes irrelevant. If they go to the new kids on block, it should well, but if governor, yes, some the weekend, or the, I mean, if Wike is involved in uh, anti party politics, the fact that he's still in the PDP, he has and not, he's he not, he has not, what, he has what, not, what, he has not campaigned for any political, for other political party. One, he has not voted. People use this word anti-party loosely. He has not voted for another party. So they use it. There's no doubt that he's, he's not demonstrating party loyalty. There's no doubt about that. But what I want him to understand is very clear. He should ask, he should look from, he should look from within. Kaimi left 
How many times have you seen fire me in the news again? When they left the governor of Ekiti State. Car the fire. How many times? Everything is about the Ebanji in Ekiti now. How many times have you had anything about my Malabuni? The moment he left the national chairman of APC, where is my my Malabuni was the Alpha and Omega of APC when he was the chairman of the Standard Convention. So Wike is just playing to the gallery. He's just dancing in Makaba dance. He's playing the ostrich. If they don't if they don't know, his head is buried under the sand and his entire body is exposed. He's not deceiving himself. He does not have people that to advise him. This is a candid advice. He's not paying me a dime to give him counsel. He will become irrelevant, mark my word, after he leaves that office. Nigerian politicians have no relevance the moment they leave office because they don't build structures. They build structures around themselves. Apart from Wike, who do you know in River State politics, for example, in the last eight years? Can anybody mention the name of the deputy governor of River State? Okay. Well, let, I'm asking, I'm just throwing this question. He, he, you know, can anybody it's who, a who is that candidate figure a that, you see, that you see from, sure you from River that. State? Okay. Hey, so, who, 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 who is the deputy governor of River State? He runs the state. What he accuses people of doing is what he does. He runs the state like an, like, 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 like an emperor, like most governors are in Nigeria. So he should, he's, because he has the resources and then he has the platform, then he invites all the media when the commission. People are not asking what are the resources of the state that they are using to pay for all the live transmission of those commissioning. You spend more money on commissioning projects than the one you even used to, to do. The money they use for live transmission and live feed of all of those things. People need to look at it. It's using state resources to promote and propagate a selfish agenda. That's the reality. There's enough to which you can fight a cause. And there's a, there's a level and there's a limit to it. He's using his personal resources. Once the state resource is not there, it will not be relevant. Mark my word. And if he wants to engage in debate, we could have the debate if he's interested. <laughs> I like how everyone just, you know, uh, throws that challenge to having a, a public debate. But it's so much to grapple with because at the end of the day, what happens at the party level trickles down, you know, to the entire country. And so we begin to see the impunity. We, we, we say uh, right here that uh, even at the party level, democracy should be respected. There should be, uh, you know, some form of uh, respect for law and what of you. And if we don't ent enthrone those tenets, then what do we have uh, you know, at the larger space when you say you become a governor from such a situation. But quickly on the Punch mm, newspaper. Okay. <laughs> quickly on the Punch okay. newspaper, a hoodlums attack. The federal government deploys soldiers, DSS, in INEC offices nationwide. And some persons have described this action and response as very reactive, uh, saying that the government has always been reactive to you know, situation rather than being proactive. But what are your thoughts, especially when there are reports that 41 no. officers have been on, have been attacked so far, uh, you know, within the, the period of time? Last week we discussed this, if you recall. Um, we discussed it last week, Friday. I served yourself and Kofi when we were reviewing this particular issue. This, is, this shouldn't even make news. Because this should have been what government should have done in the first instance, without letting anybody know that they've deployed security um, what, uh, security agencies to protect critical infrastructure. The critical infrastructure of democracy is the election and the body that is charged with the responsibility of conducting the election. It's who determines who, who governs the state. So, well, it's, it's a step too, too late, but not too late. Is a step in the right direction which could have been taken earlier and we hope that that will be further reinforced and that we protect the critical infrastructure relating to the election as far as i'm concerned when we point out issues for government to address and they take step to address it they should be they should be commended for responding to to public opinion to to to, to public um, suggestion so we, we've all said it that there's a need for the military 
and um, other security agencies to protect the critical infrastructure relating to, to, the, to the election. Not only that, um, those that have done this, we need to arrest them and prosecute them. No, but Gina, but Gina Johnson, that's, yeah, that, that, that's, that's also, no, I mean, no one is actually saying that uh, the government should not be commended for all of her response and her action towards some of the issues or public outcry. But, you know, this is not the first time this is happening. We've had cases of attacks on uh, the offices of the umpire, saddled with the responsibility of conducting elections. And if we sit back and begin to think as a people, then we'll understand that the, the polity is heated. Insecurity seemed to be a major issue that has trickled down to affect every other sector of the country. One would expect that we should be on top of the situation, reacting before those elements, non-state actors, begin to take action. We should know what to do. Uh, so, I mean, you're talking about defense now. So in football, you say the best firm form of, you know, attack is defense. So you, you, you probably, I, I hope I got that correctly. Yeah. So you, you should, we should yeah, be able yeah, to be I, able to I, put I, our acts together I, I, rather than waiting for things to happen and then we respond. We need something. I agree with you. I agree with you in totality. Now, when you respond, you also need to take steps to to prosecute those that have committed infractions. That's just it. That's 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 um, that's my take. All the ones, that, all the attacks that have been carried out, they were not carried out by ghosts. They were not carried out by angels. They were carried out by human beings, and these human beings can be tracked. And they can be tracked and they can be located. And if they are tracked and they are located, they should be prosecuted. Now, the IG said governors are using their talks and state security actually to foment violence. That means that they have intelligence to that effect. Why don't you process the intelligence and enforce the law with respect to those that you have captured in the intelligence report which you have? Why? Why? If you can, if for example, you can't prosecute governors because they have they have immunity. But you can you can you can public shame them. You take them to the court of public opinion. Let court of public opinion judge them. That's simple. If the court of law cannot deal with those ones, let the court of public opinion you have them, you name the governors, the governors, who are the governors? You name the governors of these states that are involved. And probably after they leave office, just like EFCC goes after them, after they leave office, you can go after them, after they leave office and prosecute them. We have a situation of a senator, who have, a, 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 a sitting senator, who happens to be a governor, a sitting governor, and his election result was declared under duress. Till date, he's still a sitting senator. Yeah. That election was not nullified. Well... GD, we have to go. An open confession. Mm. We have to go now. Let's do this next so, week, Friday. GD Johnson. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you. Maybe uh, always a pleasure to be with you. As long as you are interested in us doing it, we keep doing it all the time. <laughs> Uh, and that's the size of our conversation this morning on Off the Press with G.D. Johnson. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll just be looking at our first conversation on the show. Beautiful Friday morning. Please stay with us.